Hey everyone, this is Yosemite Sams here and welcome back to my drawing series. If you're wondering why I have a picture of Ariana Grande staring at us right now, stay tuned and you'll see. We're gonna learn how to do the rally method and I'm excited to do this with everyone here. I love using this technique on how to draw a person's face. This is an easy way to get the eyes, nose, and mouth in the right proportions. You know where to put everything with just lines and circles. You will understand how wrinkles form on a face and what makes a person unique. This method helps you see that everything is literally basic shapes and it gets a little more in the anatomy side of a person's head. If you would like to see how to do this method, then get out your pencil and paper and follow along with me in the YouTube artist video that taught me this method. Okay, so my idea was to do a video showing you guys the rally method on a picture of a person to help guide everyone. And I really hope that this will be helpful. I chose Ariana Grande because I thought this picture was funny looking. I do see how unique her face is, like the placement of her eyes, the little bulb on her nose, and also her dimples. But what I find funny looking is her hair. It looks like she has antennas. And of course, that reminded me of my beloved anime. My favorite antenna girl is Mayo from Tenjo Tenji. She's from one of my favorite martial art animes and she can really fight. So hopefully everyone knows about this anime because I will be really upset if no one even knew what I was talking about. This Ariana Grande has the little antennas in this picture. Let's do this here. Let me add Mayo. Who's your favorite anime character with the infamous antennas? Leave a comment below. Okay, let's not get sidetracked. So the person where I learned the Riley method from is YouTube artist Kyle Hefty. I do not know a lot about him. One day I randomly looked up a video on how to draw a person's head and he came up for me. He doesn't have too many videos, but they are all helpful. I will put a link on his YouTube below. Ever since I learned this method from him, I have been able to understand everything more and able to dissect a person's face in my head. And I believe that you will be able to do the same as well. All right, enough of the backstory. Let's start drawing. Okay, if you're looking for the Riley method, which I assume is how you came to this video, you're probably already familiar with basic head construction. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but we will need some basic measurements before we can go any further. So we're going to start with an oval for the cranium. And then we're going to divide it right down the middle. Now I like to use the tactic of dividing the head into thirds. So the first thing I look for is the brow line, not the eye line, keep that in mind. Um, and the reason for that is because we're gonna find the hairline next. And the measurement between the hairline and the brow line, if we drop that down from the brow, that's gonna be about where the nose should sit. And then you can drop that down once again, and that should be the bottom of the chin. If you had mistaken the brow line for the eye line, and then tried to divide the head into thirds like this, it's going to make your measurements all wonky. They're not gonna line up correctly. So I think it's important to remember that when you're laying in the head and doing the thirds, you're looking for the brow line. What he said was very important. When you're drawing out that line first, people do mistake and think it's for the eye line when it's really not. And I've done this so many times throughout, you know, drawing people's faces and wonder why their face doesn't look like the person and everything does get a little out of whack for me like with the placements of the eyes and the nose and the mouth because I mistakenly thought that that first line that I drew to dissect that circle in the middle was for the eye line so once you start thinking of it as the brow line and then he goes into talking about where the eye line uh, placement is you'll start to see things and draw things way better than before. 
you can now go ahead and put in the eye line. And as most of you are probably aware, the eye line is about halfway on the total shape of the head, whereas the brow line is about halfway on the initial oval we put in for the cranium. So keep in mind those are two different things. One is halfway on the total shape of the head, one is halfway on the oval of the cranium. And it's just going to be that turning point where it cuts off the side of the head like that. I'm just darkening the eye line back in. And now if you remember, we already know where the top of the ear is going to be, at least roughly. I'm going to go from that little tick mark I made, and I'm going to cut back into the shape of the head, like that. And what that gives me is the bottom of the eye socket. Okay, now we're going to put in the glabella. And it's a very important shape, and you'll sometimes hear it referred to as the keystone shape, and it's because of its importance. It's, it ties everything together. It's like the keystone in a Roman arch. And it's that little triangular wedge in between your eyes right there. Now we're going to take a line from the hairline to the eye line, and we're going to connect them with an oval. And it's going to cut right through that brow there, like that. And that's called the frontalis. And it's going to help us in placing the eyes. Um, if you'll notice where it intersects into that brow shape, um, we've created these two little triangular wedges on the inside corner of the eye socket. And if you put your finger there on your own head, you can feel that those areas are bone. So that helps us to know that we can't get the eyeballs any closer to the inside of the brow than now we're going to go ahead and create the eyeballs, and we're actually drawing the ball of the eye, not the little football shape. And the reason we want to do that is because when we draw the eyelids, we're going to draw them over that shape. So if you notice, they're sitting right up against the frontalis that we've created there, right up against the inside corner. And that's going to help so they don't get too far apart, too close together. Right, Ariana Grande's eyes are actually closer together than he shows in his picture. So um, just to let you, just to remind everyone how everyone is different, proportions will be different depending on the person. Now we're going to find the rhythm of the temple. And we're going to start with the outside of the eye here and come right up through that corner of the brow and draw a arcing line right off of the side of the head. Okay, and then we're going to go from the little line that we created for the top of that hairline there and create another arcing line like that. And now we can place the top planes and side planes of the top portion of the head. Now I'm going to go from the corner of the brow and I'm going to create a little arcing line that's going to connect it to the bottom of the brow. And I'm just redefining that shape of the eye socket. Now we're going to put in the nose and I'm just going to start with a little triangular wedge here. And I'm going to connect that to the glabella or keystone with two vertical lines. And what that's going to do is create the front of the nose. Now I'm going to come from the bottom of uh, my little triangular wedge and I'm going to put an oval, it's going to come up against the eyeball there, like that. So we've now created the front and side of the nose, and I'm going to put that in red here. I'm now going to darken in the original line we made for the placement of the nose, and shade that in. And what we've done is create this little triangle that's going to be the bottom plane of the nose. And now I'm just adding another little oval that's going to sit right over the top of that. And that's going to be the ball of the nose. I'm going to add the rhythm for the mouth. And we're going to come right up over that ball of the nose there and create an oval like that that intersects that shape. And this is representative of the obicularis oris. And the cool thing is by intersecting that over the ball of the nose, we've created the wings of the nostrils right there. And we're just going to start from that bottom line and create another little oval right there. Now there's a little area between your bottom lip 
and your chin that's going to usually fall into shadow. And we've basically created that with the overlap. Now we're going to find the laugh line. And we're going to start from the bottom of the chin and we're going to create another oval that's going to come up and over the oval that we've made for the nose. And it's going to be more of a teardrop shape than anything. And the reason that the laugh line is important is as your mouth stretches and compresses or if you have dimples or wrinkles on a character, they're going to fall on that line. And the reason for that is because um, wrinkles and, and folds in the skin, they're not random. They're places where the skin has sunken in to the underlying anatomy. So, in this example, if you were to put dimples, it would be about... Right All right, I find what he said to be very important because this really did help me um, when drawing people's faces, knowing where that laugh line is. Because once you know where the laugh line is, you'll know where the cheekbones are, you'll know where the ear, uh, like where the earlobe is, and then you'll be able to follow the whole ear. So everything really just works out when you know where the laugh line is. put the rhythm for the cheekbones in and we're going to start from the side of the head right over here and we're going to imagine an oval coming through the head and just underneath the nose. The exact placement of this line is going to change depending upon the individual you're trying to draw. They may have higher or lower cheekbones so you'll need to take that into account. All right, so Ariana Grande actually has higher cheekbones. So as you can see, I'm adjusting my lines a little bit. I can see exactly where her cheekbones are. Also, it looks a little different because she is smiling a little in this picture versus what he's doing on his end. So I'm just adjusting everything with my lines to make sure that it actually matches up with her face. So you guys can see that as well. Now we're going to find the corner of the mouth here. And you remember how we already worked out where we have uh, the top and bottom of the ear? Well, now we're going to use that because we're going to come from the corner of the mouth and we're going to create a little arcing line up and out to the top of the ear and then swing it down to the bottom. All right, I'll show you on the other side here. Up to the top of the ear and then connect it down right there. All right, now we're going to go back to the corner of the mouth and I'm going to create a little arc up and over and connect it with a straight line. And I'm just going to shade that in and that's going to be the top lip. And now we're going to put in the philtrum, which is that little teardrop shape above your top lip, that little indentation. We now have enough information to finish the outside of the head shape. And I'm going to come in from the bottom lip here and if you just take a straight line right across, that's going to be about where the corner of the jaw is. And I'm connecting that line to the top of the cheeks there. And I'm going to take that and then connect it to the chin. You could actually stop right here if you wanted to now that our head shape is complete. Okay, so I'm putting in the final touches on Ariana Grande's face. Putting everything to my liking and matching it up. To me, this is very easy, but I hope that this video helped. Uh, just practice doing this method and trust me, it will click and you will know how to draw a face even without using a reference. Also, as he stated before, you're not going to use it to the T for everyone that you draw, but once you are familiar with it, you will already know the placements. This is just a guide to break it down for you so that you can understand the basics first. All right, everyone, it's time for a give and take. Please like, subscribe, and comment below if this method was smooth sales for you. Thank you for joining my drawing series and stay tuned for more how-to videos.